Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, how old am I? <laughs> yeah, I'm 20 years older than Ben. ben Ben's my best friend. Uh, he's my worst friend. He's my only friend. <laughs> so they're all, all, all roll into one. I've been living nearly 10 years in China. I see the 21st century being Chinese. Chinese are actually smarter than Americans and Europeans. On average, IQ about 105, like the Germans, also 105. Americans, most Europeans, about 100. So I see this as the 21st century as, as China's. So one of my messages in, in the talk will be that I would like to see the dominant issue of the 21st century be led, not just followed, but led by the dominant culture of the 21st century, which, which, which will be China. I see the banksters, New York, Frankfurt, London, Basel, as destroying the economies. As soon as the dollar, are you all aware of what's going to happen when the dollar crashes? America's standard of living will fall to third world levels. Japan's going the same way, massively in debt, and Europe the same thing. So virtually that will leave Russia and China standing. So, so I see China will just take over the world easily. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> Very recently. <laughs> I hope they're, not con hope they're not controlled by the same people who control the Western economies. Okay, so, so I'm a political animal, okay? So y this talk will be politics, philosophy, and obviously tech. Right? So they'll g give, give you a bit of a, a feel for what's coming. Right, so... Uh, I, I believe the dominant question for this century will be this one, in four words, like, should humanity build artelects? That's, that's my word. An, an artelect is just short for artificial intellect. That, that's, that's the name I give to a godlike, massively intelligent machine. And, and by that, I don't, I don't mean a machine that's like two times or ten times smarter than human beings. I'm a math and a physics guy, that's my background, mathematical, physics. R right now, I've been retired five years. Now I make YouTube lecture videos at PhD level, pure math and math physics, to teach the world for free at that level, high level, and electronic libraries. So, so I go to Google and I get all these books, and Google, the last year or so, has been putting lots of links to full content books. How the paper publishes are, are surviving, I don't understand. seems to me a contradiction. But there are now huge numbers, millions of links to full content books. So, so I'm getting them all and putting them into you know, files and, and creating electronic libraries for the world so students who are very smart, you know, they're PhD level students in the top 1% of IQ, but they're peasants all over the world, but they can teach themselves. Right, so I'm trying to revolutionize education. That, that, that's what I do now. I call myself a globicator, global educator. Okay? So p politics, philosophy, and tech. <coughs> so this, this question I see is dominating our global politics this century. So if you make an analogy, what, what was the question that dominated the 19th and 20th century? It was Karl Marx's question. Who should own capital? Right? When, when the Industrial Revolution came along, the steam engines and so forth, there, there was a revolution in manufacture. The, the cottage industries, you know, the, the, the home looms in, in, in your own cottage, they could not compete with the machines that are just working 24-7 and at great speed. So the productivity of the machines just bankrupted the cottage industries. So what, what did they do? How, 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 I mean, some of them... The, the so-called Luddites, they, they smashed the machines. They, they found they were profoundly threatened. Their livelihood was threatened by the machines. So, <coughs> so I see a similar question. As the machi our machines, our intelligent machines, become more, in, uh, more, in, more intelligent than we are, and not just two times, ten times, try a trillion, trillion times. 
That's, those huge numbers come out of physics. So, so I see this question absolutely dominating our global politics this century and to cut to the chase, bottom line, I see a war coming, a major war, 21st century war, over rival answers to this question. And at the end of this speech, I will ask you to vote right? be be between three choices. One is humanity should build these machines. Right? So the answer to this question would be yes. That's first choice. Second choice is no, it's too dangerous. We could never be sure what these machines would do to us. Right? There's too much risk. Right? That's the second choice. And the third choice is to do this that you yourselves become Artelex by doing this. You add components to your own brain and modify yourself bit by bit. Pun intended. Okay? So that's the third option. So think about it. You know, when we come to the end of the talk, think about it now and, and through the talk and make a decision. And then I'll ask you to vote. You, you know, you'll put up your hands, and then the cameraman will record the vote. And this is the first time this has been done on the planet. You will be making a little bit of history. <laughs> okay? Because this issue today, it's still fringy, right? It's still a little crazy. It's, it's for the creative crazies. But in time... I, I talk about the IQ gap, right? Human-level intelligence, machine-level intelligence. Your home robot is about here. But, but you know, every year, the robots are going to get smarter and smarter. Ben, ben may actually succeed, right? And so that gap, human-level intelligence, machine-level intelligence, as that gap gets smaller and smaller and smaller, Millions of people, billions of people, will start asking obvious questions like, well, are we, you know, the human species, we humans, are we going to allow our machines to become smarter than we are? Could, could they become a lot smarter than we are? And, and, and the math physicist in me, is, and techie guy, because I, I used to be a computer science professor, I used to teach this stuff, I'm saying, oh yes, they could be like a trillion, trillion times smarter than we are, right? Godlike. And I'll be talking about that but in, in, the, in the talk. Why is this... Uh, okay. All right. So, go back a century or so. The dominant uh, question then was who should own capital? You know, this guy, Adam... Oops. This guy, Adam Smith, famous name, and Karl Marx, another famous name, the two rivals, if you like, on this question. Uh, Adam Smith saying capital should be privately owned by the people who own the capital, and in French that comes out as capitaliste, you know, the people who own the capital. And uh, Marx spoke German and French and English. He, he, he kept getting banned from... Belgium and France and Germany, he eventually ended up in London, cosmopolitan. So, so these two guys, in a sense, the, the philosophers of the two rival answers between uh, who should own capital. And the next, the next big issue for the 21st century is should humanity build artelects? That question, I believe, will dominate our global politics this century. And I read a book about that oh god, 17 years ago now, called The Art Elect War. So that's, that's the war that I'm predicting will happen over this question of sh should humanity build art elects or not. And as, as that IQ gap closes, the, the debate, I call it the species dominance debate. Dom by dominance, I mean which species should be the most intelligent. Should it be human beings? Or should human beings be, be like a stepping stone to a higher species, to, to a godlike creature called, called an artelect? And I see that question bitterly dividing humanity. 
And, and I, you know, we will vote. I will ask you to vote. And you'll see for yourselves what, how, 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 how humanity splits between people who, who love the dream, that, that they want to build these godlike creatures. There's a whole universe out there, right? Out there is a trillion, trillion stars. Billions of years older than we are. We now know most, most suns have planets. Maybe a tenth of those planets, uh, the temperature is just right for water to be liquid. Therefore, very probably, life. So out there, life is everywhere. Okay? And billions of years older than we are. Our sun is what? Four and a half billion years old? The universe is nearly 14 billion years old. So out there, there are creatures probably hugely more advanced than we are. In fact, if you ask me, privately, in, in my heart, I think, as a scientist, as a math physicist, I think the universe has been designed by a hyper-intelligence. Why? Because the laws of physics are so mathematical. And the more I study this stuff, the more mathematical the laws of physics become. That, that, that's just my suspicion. Anyway, so <laughs> out, out there, maybe hyper creatures that make the artelect look like a dumb bum. Maybe. So one of the great goals of the artelects may be to you know, leave the Earth and go exploring, try and find these hyper creatures. So, so the, the, there's the big picture. Right? The universe. So I call the I call the people Huh? How about the small Okay. <coughs> so who who should rule? Right? Uh, I don't have the laser pointer. So should human beings remain the dominant species? Should artelects become the dominant species? Or should people become gods themselves, become artelects themselves? They're the three choices. I'll you know, keep saying this, ask you, ask you to, to vote on this. <coughs> and these machines, they will be with us in a matter of decades. I'm nearly 70, so I, I will not see the war, I doubt. I may live another 20 odd years. My father's 96. So I think I've got his genes. Well, if they exist, <laughs> but assuming they don't. So I've probably got 20 years. Now, look, I look at your faces, most of you in your, what, 20s, 30s? You will all see the debate. Well, assuming you don't get killed tomorrow, but you will all see the debate. <laughs> and a lot of you, I believe, will see the conflict. Now, this time, it's not... Now, th with this war coming th that I believe will happen, it, it won't be like 20th century wars, which were between nation-states, like Germany versus Russia in World War II, or, or China versus Japan. That's 20 20th century thinking. This time, if we have a major war, firstly, we're talking 21st century weapons, right? The weapons will be far deadlier than 20th century weapons. And this time, the stake, you know, what, what can be lost? You play poker, you have a stake, you know, the amount of money you have to put in that you could lose. What is the stake this time? It's not the survival of a country. This time, it's the survival of a species. Us! Right? So the stake has never been higher. Right? You, you follow that logic. Okay. And therefore, if the stake has never been so, so high, the level of passion in this debate will never be so high. Because you're talking about the survival, not of a country, but of a species. So to what lengths will the politicians go who are... Take the answer A. Those, those politicians 
who say humanity should never build artifacts. It's too risky. Okay? These machines, they would become so much more intelligent than we are, we would never understand them. They'd be thinking, what's... They'd be thinking a million times faster than we do. They'd be thinking at electronic speeds. Our brains, we think at chemical speeds, maybe 100 meters a second. Electronic brains, they'd be thinking at the speed of light. It's a million times faster. That means they could do a PhD that takes, say, four years, do the math. They could do that in a matter of minutes. <laughs> right? You're talking godlike machines. They have virtually unlimited memory. And if you're going to build these things, why on earth would you make them mortal? I mean, it's stupid, right? So these machines would be immortal. They would not die. So that, uh, they, they could be trillions of trillions of times smarter than, than we are. The, 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 oops, the physics allows you know, D here. The physics allows that to, to become real. They, they, because they're electronic, they could redesign their architecture. They could redesign themselves in milliseconds. They could become something else, like snap, 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 snap. They're just different creatures every time by, by redesigning themselves. Okay? So they, they could a adapt themselves to virtually any, any environment. Why is it? Okay, so um, now set, set the scenario a bit. The IQ gap starts closing. Like this, this decade, the 2010s, is the decade of research. Like, you know, AGI, robotics, artificial intelligence, artificial brains, uh, Moore's Law. Remember Moore's Law? Like the, the capacity of chips doubles every year or two. That will keep going. Two by two by two by two by two. So you get fabulous capacities, right? So uh, these artificial brain projects are popping up like mushrooms all, all, all over the world, like uh, Ray Kurzweil, famous futurist. Uh, he's heading a, uh, an artificial brain, artificial intelligence type project at Google, then at, uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, IBM is investing heavily in what they call cognitive computing, right? Again, sort of artificial brains, right? So that's, that's the decade now, that's, that's research. And then the 2020s, uh, the research will have reached a point where D, you know, R&D, research and development, so the D will start taking over, and then you'll start seeing artificial brain type companies. So you'll see new companies being formed, and that, in, that artificial brain intelligence will put, be put into your home robots, and then a massive industry, with your home robot. I mean, ask yourselves. I mean, ask yourself, how much money would you be prepared to spend on a genuinely useful home robot that could walk the dog, babysit the kids, wash all the dishes, clothes, entertain you, sex you, educate you? How much would you spend? Would you spend more than for a car? Probably. So a huge industry. Okay? Bill Gates is on record. He's saying by the year 2030, by the end of the 20s, the home robot industry will be the biggest in the world. So how do you stop it? Right? The, the economic momentum will be enormous. How do you stop it? You don't. Now I think politics, China and America, China, up. America, down. At the intersection point, do you think the Minister of Defense of China is going to allow the Minister of Defense of the US to have smarter soldier robots than China's and vice versa? So the military momentum is even more unstoppable than the economic momentum. Agree with that? I don't think you can stop it. And there are other arguments, in the, like uh, 
Why, why do some people climb Mount Everest? Seems such a stupid, dangerous activity. I mean, people get killed doing that. Why do they do it? Because it's, it's in our genes. It's part of human nature, right? We, we are strivers. We, we want to know what's beyond the next hill. So if humanity can make massively intelligent, godlike machines, do you think we're going to stop? I doubt it, right? So th th there are all these arguments in favor of, of going to the next step, cre creating like the, the next rung on the ladder of, of evolution, where human beings become just a stepping stone to a much bigger picture, right? Because out there, like our pathetic little human lives where we are snuffed out, in 80 years, we are nothing compared to the big picture. The trillion, trillion stars out there, right, that are billions of years older than we are. There's an existence out there hugely more significant than what we are. Now, that vision I call cosmist. It's based on the word cosmos, right? Yeah, the universe. So ask yourself. Are you a cosmist? The ideology would be cosmism. Right? Are you a cosmist? Do, 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 do you like that dream? Do, do, does that inspire you? Or are you a Terran? They're the opposite. Not, not terror as in terrorist, but terror, the earth. Now, Terrans... By definition, they are the people who say building these artifacts is too dangerous. I imagine you're a Terran global, you know, the whole planet, politician. What would you do? Would, would, would you accept the risk? I mean, it may be small, but it may, may be right. It may be a small risk that these machines eventually say, oh, these human beings, they're like a cancer. They're a pest. Uh, have you seen the movie? To, uh, Matrix, the, the first one, Matrix. You remember that famous scene where Mr. Smith says, says to whatever his name was, the, the st star of the, the movie, you are a disease, and we are the cure. Remember that scene? So who's, who's to say that these artifacts may make that decision? Oh, these, these humans, they need oxygen. And this damn oxygen is rusting our circuitry. So let's get rid of the oxygen. And we don't give a damn about these human beings. They're just ants. They're nothing. We are a million, million times smarter than they are. We don't give a damn about these human ants. Now, if you're a Terran politician, what do, what do politicians do, right? They, they hope for the best, but they plan for the, the worst. And what's the worst thing that can happen from the Terran point of view? We get wiped out. And you're not wiping out a country. You're wiping out the species. So to what lengths would you go as a Terran politician, global politician, what lengths would you go to to stop that happening? I believe they will say these cosmists, they are the most dangerous people on the planet. And when push really comes to shove, <coughs> they will make a decision to get rid of them. They will argue it's better, ethically speaking, to annihilate a few million cosmists for the sake of the survival of billions of human beings. I think that's what they'll do. Now, to start with, probably 
Uh, ben, are you, you ready for this? If I were a Terran politician, what would my initial strategy be? I'd kill Ben. We'll find him! <laughs> Kill Kurzweil. Kill Google. Kill IBM. Annihilate the cosmists, the brain builders, the brain building companies. Destroy them. Okay? That's what I think their first strategy will be. There's a little story. A couple of years back, I got hired by Warner Brothers, you know, Hollywood, to be the tech advisor of a movie that was about artificial intelligence in the future and blah, blah, blah. And, and, and I was advising strongly, I was saying, look, uh, I don't care about the detail, you know, typical Hollywood, you know, drama, boy, girl, sex, or that, that's irrelevant. But at the background, set the movie a couple of decades, not too far, a few decades into the future when AI is real, right? And the, and the IQ gap has closed. And the debate, the species dominance debate, you know, should humanity build artifacts, that debate is raging, imagine. Okay? And there are vigilante groups, terror groups. Now, in the movie, they were called, have you seen the movie? Uh, Transcendence, have you seen that movie? In the movie, those Terrans, as I call them, were called Rift. And what were they doing? They were killing Ben, or the equivalent. They were smashing up AI labs all, all over the US and so on. Okay? And that's what I was advising Hollywood to do. And then I don't hear anything for a couple of years, and then I see the first uh, trailer of the movie Transcendence, and my jaw drops, and I say, hey, that's my movie! And then, ah, then the penny drops. Aha. Transcendence. Warner Brothers. Oh, I think I get the picture. Warner Brothers took my idea from this movie and put it into that movie, and therefore they did not have to pay me the X0 bonus figure for the first movie being filmed. Now, that's my deep suspicion. Okay? So, so you can thank me for transcendence. <laughs> That's, hmm? Yeah, but the story... <laughs> the story is there, right? So Hollywood often gets the future you know, before the scientists. Ho the Hollywood types, <coughs> they have an easy time of it. All they have to do is put their fantasies into film, right? Whereas we scientists, you know, I used to be director of an artificial brain lab in, in China, trying to build China's first artificial brain. We have to do the real work. And, that, and that's, that's tougher. Okay? So, <coughs> imagine... So th this, is, this is Ray Kurzweil. Ben, you know already. I believe, probably, one of these two will be the first guy to create a near human level artificial intelligence. Now if that happens, you are in the presence of greatness. And if you're a Terran, quick, here's your opportunity. <laughs> okay. So I'm predicting, and now, now I'm being quite serious. Ben and Ray and others and Google, the IBM and, and you know, these companies, they will have to beef up their security and people like Ben will have to be careful about appearing in public. Now today it's still crazy and science fiction like, right? But I tell you, as that IQ gap closes, it will become more and more serious. It, it'll be, it will become deadly serious and the cause of a major war, I believe, because the passion will never be so great. This is the sort of main message I'm, I'm trying, trying, to, trying to get up. What's it? <coughs> so I've spoken a, a bit about uh, you know, the, the three main strands. I'll ask, again, I'll ask you to vote between these three possibilities. The people who want 
to build these godlike machines, the people who are opposed to dangerous, you never know what they would do with us, right? And the third group, people who want to become gods, artifacts themselves, right? And the three, three possibilities. <coughs> So here's the, here's the vision for the cosmists, our pathetic little human lives, right? We, we could become godlike. We could create gods. So cosmists as god builders. Right? The grand vision of a very powerful ideology. Right? Cosmism, cosmism as god building strong motive. It'd be almost like a religion to a lot of people, right? Give, gives, gives humanity a purpose, but a scientifically based purpose and, and a sense of direction, you know, what, what to do, a goal for humanity, a magnificent goal, the cosmos, right? And this, this is the vision of the Terrans, terrified that humanity might get wiped out, right? The Terminator robot. Hollywood gets there sooner before the scientists because they don't have to do the work. And the cyborgists, right? If you're a, a Trekkie, Star Trek fan, you're probably familiar with the, the Borg. Resistance is futile. Right? Okay, so these, these are the three, three main options I see for 21st century global politics. <coughs> okay. With this vote... You, you guys, first in history, first on the planet, to be filmed taking a vote on these three possibilities. Before I've done it with two, you know, just t Terran or Cosmos, but this time, for the first time, all three. I'm really curious. I, I don't know how it's going to come out. Right? And it's going to be filmed. It's going on YouTube. And you guys will be making a bit of history. Now, um, now Ben's father is a sociologist, professor of sociology recently retired. Personally, I would like to see the creation of a new branch of sociology called simply Artelic Sociology. Because if this question is going to dominate our global politics this century, we, we, need, we need data. We need sociologists and psychologists to go out into the real world and do surveys. What, what percentage of people are cosmists? What percentage are Terrans? What percentage want to be cyborgists. You know, they, they, they want to cyborg themselves. We don't, we don't know yet. And, and as, as I speak, we still don't know. And, and in about 20 minutes, we will know. <laughs> right? Thanks to you guys. Okay? <clears throat> so, is the, will there be a difference between men and women on this question? Between older people, younger people? between religious people and non-religious people? You know, sociological questions. So I'd like, I'd like to see a new branch of sociology called Artelic Sociology. What? What? What's happening? Did I? Okay, so I should should finish up pretty fast. Ten minutes. Okay. Oh, that's that's doable. Yeah, that's doable. All right. <coughs> okay. Now the, the, this word first strike here. <laughs> Let's assume that the assassinations and the sabotage is going is undergoing. The the cosmic politicians. I, I I see political parties being formed. Right? Like, like 19th century, 20th century parties. They were parties that were concerned with answers to the question of economics. You know, who should own capital? And you had, you had the liberals and the socialists and the fascists and the communists. They're all sort of economic type parties. But in the 21st century, the dominant, the number one question is, should humanity build artifacts? So the political parties will be Terran, Cosmist, and Cyborgist, I think. No, I'd probably have different names, but that's, that's the idea. Right? So if you're a Terran politician 
and the cosmos politicians are starting to kill you because you're killing them, right? So it'll be like a kind of uh, arms war, right? As the scale of the killing and assassinations and sabotage increases, what, you know, what, what, what's going to happen? I mean, these, the, 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 t the cyborgist guys and the cosmos guys, they're not going to just sit around twiddling their thumbs waiting to be killed. Of course not. They'll hit back, right? So the, the killing and the passion will just rise and rise until eventually it reaches government level and then nuclear level. And I'm predicting not just... Like, the Second World War started for China in 37 when the Japs invaded. Started for the Europeans when uh, Polish communists were slaughtering thousands of German Poles or Polish Germans, forced, forced Hitler's hand, so Hitler invaded to protect them, 39. And again, the Japs, uh, when, when uh, Roosevelt cut off the oil supply to Japan, so of course, you know, forcing Japan into the war, which is what he wanted. So for Americans, World War II started in 41. How many people died in World War II? Well, it depends how you define it. Somewhere between 50 and 100 million people. It was the worst catastrophe, well, ever, in terms of numbers, right? Prior to that was the, the, uh, the communist takeover where some 60 plus million white Christian Russians were slaughtered by the Communist Party, right? according to Solzhenitsyn, the famous Solzhenitsyn, you know, the Gulag Archipelago guy. Right? That, 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 was, that was a massive holocaust. But with 21st century weapons, with an issue for which the stake has never been so high and the passion level has never been so high, I'm predicting billions. But the population of the Earth is only 7 billion. So I talk about giga death. Now, I'm sorry to have ruined your lunch, <laughs> but if if you take it seriously, and it's difficult to take it seriously because it's, well, you, you're probably suffering, if you heard the term, cognitive dissonance. It, it's like going up to a priest and saying, oh, Mr. Priest, there's no God. You've wasted your whole life. Now, m m most human beings can't cope with that, right? So they suffer cognitive dissonance. They, they just don't believe it. They reject it. I mean, the idea that billions of people could be killed in a terrible war it's just too much for most people to cope with. But think of the logic behind it. The, the, the logic is scary and very persuasive. And you have two, two bitterly opposed ideologies. Cosmist, you know, building gods, the whole universe. Okay? And on the other hand, Terran, fear that humanity is threatened. Maybe, maybe wiped out. Time? How am I going for time? Five minutes? Okay. All right. <clears throat> Okay. So I see the Terrans initially, yeah, they'll start assassinating the main brain builders, sabotaging the, the main companies. So, so the transcendence movie scenario, see that becoming real? That's, that, that's here. And then, uh, you know, these guys, these two groups, they may, maybe will combine forces and protect themselves. They, they don't want to be targets of assassination and sabotage. They, they will beef up their security enormously. And, and Ben, uh, I predict five years from now, you will not dare appear in public. <laughs> <laughs> five years, okay? <laughs> Take a bet. <laughs> yeah, Ben's a good friend. So. Okay, all right? Uh, and, and it'll ratchet up. It'll be kind of, kind of arms race. Like, like, do you know any history? Did you hear about the, the so-called... 30 years war in Germany in the 1600s. That was a religious war. So, so the Catholics and the Protestants, or as the French say, Protestants, the people who protest, Protestants. The Protestants would go to a, a Catholic village and annihilate them. And then a city on the other side would go to that 
that the people who annihilated the village and annihilate them. And then a big city would annihilate them. And it just escalated until eventually, in the Thirty Years' War in Germany in the 1600s, a third of the German population were killed. A third. Right? So I'm predicting much the same kind of thing will happen in this intellect war because of the passion. Okay. <coughs> and another two minutes. Okay, just quickly, wh where do I see China coming into all this? Well, I see, well, as I was saying at the beginning, I see China dominating the 21st century. This will be China's century. China is smarter, higher economic growth rate, 1.3 billion people. I don't see any rivalry coming from India, even though it'll be the largest population soon, five years, ten years. Why? Because the Indians are a lot dumber than Chinese. Their average IQ is 85. 85. Right? Chinese, 105. So China's so much smarter. So China will be the absolute dominant power in the 21st century. I see, I see that as inevitable. And, and, and next year, if it happens, the dollar will crash. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to say, but America has, has shipped out all its most of its manufacturing to, well, to China. Yeah, yeah. We're closer. We're closer. <laughs> yeah, I, well, it was one cent, and I gave you the cent. I gave you the cent. Right. <laughs> but today, I don't. Do you follow the news? The economic news. China is dumping U.S. Treasury bonds at the rate of a hundred billion dollars a month. Oh, no, it's been out for months, for, for, for several months now. The last three months or so, China has dumped $100 billion of U.S. Treasury bonds, you know, IOUs from the U.S. government, onto the market. China is obviously preparing for... With, with the U.S. spending, just printing money like crazy, like a, the, the U.S. has a deficit of a trillion dollars a year, now, one of my favorite commentators on all these issues is Jim Willie. If you remember the name, go to YouTube, Jim Willie. He's saying, do you know about derivatives and all that stuff? Yeah, 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 right. Okay. <laughs> so so with, with China, I'd like to see China as the dominant power become the leader of the dominant question of the 21st century. So see that one of the one of the roles for China. <coughs> okay, so oops. So America out of the picture, Europe gone, Australia, Japan, virtually just leaves China, China and Russia as, as the superpowers. Uh, I'd like to see China create an artificial general intelligence organization. Obviously, Ben would lead it. And in time, you've heard of NASA, N A S A, America's space. Administration, and by administration, the final A, you're talking about tens of thousands of scientists and engineers who build rockets and send them to the planets, right? Well, I talk about a CABA. You can guess what it stands for, right? Chinese Artificial Brain Administration. Tens of thousands of scientists and engineers who design and build artificial brains for the Chinese artificial brain industry. The richest industry in existence at that time, in the future, near future. Okay? <laughs> okay, now let's, now let's take a vote. And the, 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 I, I, I will put the vote like three times. I'll ask you to raise your hand. And keep your hand up, please, because it's going to be filmed. And we want to count you. We want to get statistics. This is the first time this has ever happened. Okay? So the first, re now remember the three choices. Uh, just choose one, please. Don't, don't vote twice or three times. You know, let's, let's keep it simple, okay? So you have one choice of three possibilities. The first one is, do you think humanity should build these godlike artleks? That's the first that's choice one. Second one, to repeat, do you think it's too dangerous? Humanity should not 
build these art legs. That's, that's the second choice. Okay? And the third choice is to do this. Do you personally want to do this? Do you, do you want to become an art leg god yourself? No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to get a breakdown of those three. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that gets, <laughs> it gets too complicated. I'm going to keep it simple, right? Okay, you ready? Have you, have you made a decision in your own mind, everybody? Okay, and the camera's going to scan around. Okay, keep your hand up for about, I don't know, 30 seconds, 20 seconds. So, so, so no, uh, <laughs> you're going to count? Okay. Okay, so the first option, do you think humanity should build Artelex? Raise your hand, please. Keep it up for about 20 seconds. Whoa! Look around. Have a look around. <laughs> so I have mine seen. So can, ben, can you write it down? I don't, I don't no, okay. Okay. Second option: it's too dangerous. You are a Terran. You're terrified. These machines, m one day, for whatever reason, may decide to wipe out humanity. So you are a Terran. So, so how many? Oh, that's interesting. Okay, now third option, remember, you yourself <laughs> want to become an Arsalek God. You want to do this. So how, how many... <laughs> ah, n now that is interesting. I've never seen this before. Hands high, please. Oh, uh, Ben, Ben, Ben. <laughs> okay. So, can you read out the results? Yeah, so the cross test got 19, uh, and the parents got 5. What about your guys? <laughs> well, I raised my hand for the, for the cyborg, and, and Ben uh, was one of them. So, you didn't vote. Uh, I, I'm on the fence. Yeah, that. Or it, it may be a self-selected <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So let me, let me finish with one quick question: How many years do you think it will be before you get approached by an opinion? survey company asking this question. See, t today, you are a fringy group. You're on the fringe, the cutting edge, the bleeding edge of this debate. How many years do you think it will be before it's like mainstream and everybody knows about it? Five? <coughs> ten? Five, ten, maybe? Okay. I'll, I'll stop there. Thank you for the vote. You just made a bit of history. 